Uh, that's a new report from Wellpex saying that the economic powerhouses of China, Japan, and the U.S. may be the home of the wealthiest in the world, but Nigeria in West Africa is going to produce the higher number of new millionaires in dollar terms, those earning between $1 million and $30 million between now and the year 2023. Okay. Uh, all that, whether it ties to the growth of the economy or whatever, you guys will, will have some discussions on that some other day. But right now, let's talk about the Nigeria Maritime Safety. Administration called Nimasa are trying to brief everyone on what was achieved last year and what the outlook for the new year is all about and also outlining what the roadmap uh, will be for that organization. Uh, one of the adjunct lecturers at the Lagos Business School, Dr. Doyin Salami, have his own views about what Nimasa should be doing and what the activities of the agency holds for those in the upstream and downstream sector of the Nigeria's hydrocarbon industry. Let's take a listen. The outlook for Nigeria's economy is going to be driven by three things, and we're very clear about that. And the outlook for Nigeria's economy is going to be driven by three things, and we're very clear about that. And we have deliberately set it up like this. The elections and their aftermath, in our view, represent the single biggest issue facing Nigeria in 2019. Let me be clear, there are two dimensions to which or from which we can look at the elections. But I'm only interested in one. One dimension is will we have successful elections? The second is who wins. Now, I know that in this house there are partisans all over the place, so I will not even be bothered about who wins. What is of greatest importance to me is are the elections going to be successful? And let me define for you success. Success in our view goes back to 2015. Recall, 2015 elections, there was a 15-minute period when it looked as if we were going to lose everything. But we passed that and the elections succeeded. Winners were declared, losers accepted defeats and went home gracefully. The key question for Nigeria, and for us, as far as the outcome is concerned, is we hope and we will work towards elections that are successful. And please don't forget, in 2015, almost after Nigeria's successful elections in 2015, we saw elections in Kenya. Those elections essentially failed. Why? Because there was an outbreak of violence. The elections were disputed, there was a lot of bloodlet. And so for me, the biggest single parameter as far as 2019 is concerned is that Nigeria conducts successful elections. What else? Nigeria, if you go back to the previous time, Nigeria remains an oil story. Oil quantities and oil prices. Yes, there are assumptions in the budget as far as oil prices are concerned, but we are very clear that with oil quantities and oil prices, data is clear about Nigeria. The year before an election, oil quantity drops. But we have to ensure that these elections do not themselves become a reason why oil quantities will drop. And then finally, what do we do with policy? whilst elections are, being, are going on and after the elections. In my view, policy becomes relevant when the elections have become successful. We hope and we will work towards successful elections. What then do we see? Let me make the point that the baseline assumptions on which these projections have been made are based on the ERG. Don't forget, the MASA is a federal government, is an agency of the Ministry of Transport, and therefore its views are in line with those of the government. I say this very explicitly because there are views out there that are a bit less robust, a bit less optimistic than that of the government. Indeed, some argue that the growth we will see in 2019 will only be marginally higher than what we have seen in 2018. But, any which way, what is clear is that the baseline assumption is that the economy will grow by 3%, and that
that becomes the basis for driving other parameters. And the, as far as the maritime industry is concerned, given what I have said, that is affected by local and global events, there are three things to bear in mind. The global economy is expected to slow. Protectionism, especially in the United States and China, could be a factor. And a weak recovery in commodity prices is what we expect. And the, the next couple of slides simply show some of the points that I've made. The next slide simply now tells you what do we expect on the global side. It's clear that the slowing of global trade and global economy is expected to lead to a slightly weaker international maritime environment. What then, as far as the world is concerned, all of these simply point to slightly weaker conditions globally. Uh, Dr. Odoyin Salami, uh, an adjunct lecturer at the Lagos Business School. But of course, what does the budget 2019 and the 2019 general elections mean for NEMASA, the agency? Let's listen to the Director General, the head of the agency himself, Peter Saiti Dakuku. This year, in 2019 2020 forecast, is focusing on harnessing the shipping and maritime sector for sustainable growth. Essentially, the focus will be addressing Two important things. One is how emerging, emerging trends in the global maritime industry affect the maritime sector in Nigeria. And you heard Dr. Salami show that things going on around the world will definitely affect shipping and maritime sector in Nigeria. There have been weak commodity demand which will affect the shipping sector in the country if commodity prices don't be up. You also heard him say the trade war between the United States and China will also affect shipping demands and what happens in the maritime sector. Yes, indeed, there will be more appetite for oil coming from China. But where, in which direction are they looking at? If they look at the direction of third world countries, including Nigeria, then they will demand for more oil and gas from third world countries. It will translate to more shipping services in third world countries. And so what goes on would definitely affect what happens in our sector and in our country. The second factor we'll be looking at is what domestic factors will influence the maritime sector in Nigeria. If we were to stem or stem piracy, even capital vessels, there will be a significant drop in demand for capital vessels. And so it's something that we need to attend to urgently. This year's forecast predicts that the maritime sector has the potential of contributing at least 10% of Nigeria's GDP in no distant future, as Nigeria has the biggest market in Africa and generates about 65 to 67% of cargo throughput in West and Central Africa. And that about 65% of all cargo heading for the region of West and Central Africa will most likely end the Nigerian market. The noble Nigerians play major roles in the maritime and shipping sector. Two things are critical. The first is asset acquisition, and the second is human capacity. Peter Said Dakuku, the Director General at NEMASA. Well, we'll come back after the break. We'll take a look at the MPC communique of January 2019. What's in it for the economy as the central bank continues to intervene in the FX market on behalf of indigenous producers? That's what we're talking about when we come back.